Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to our Romans Bible study here on a beautiful, sunny Monday morning in Queen City, Texas, here in my office at Crossway Church. And I'm glad you're with us today. It is January the 20th, 2020. And so uh, I guess that makes it 2020 and at uh, uh, 20 hundred tonight and 20 minutes after, I guess it'll be 20, 2020, 20, 2020. That's kind of wild, isn't it? And I heard that the other day and thought about it just now when I uh, thought about it being January the 20th, 2020. Uh, I never thought the world would see 2020 on this side of glory, but praise God, we're still here and we're still sharing God's Word. I'm glad you're tuned in with us to be able to be a part of this broadcast live if you are or whenever you are, if you're watching, and we're just thankful that we have the opportunity and the technology to be live and to upload it to our YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316, so that all over the world people can watch this, and believe me, they are, and they're learning the gospel in God's Word, learning the righteousness of God's Word, learning how to live for God. Not what you do, but how you do all the things the Bible tells us to do. Well, the Bible also tells us how to do that, and that's basically the center of our teaching in Romans, because without the book of Romans, chapter 6, 7, and 8, nobody's going to ever know how to live for God. You ask anybody today, how do you live for God? They'll say, well, you go to church, you pray, you study the Word. No, that's what you do. How do you do those things? How do you overcome the sin nature? How do you stop making excuses for sin and find the victory that's been afforded you already at Calvary in Christ at the cross? That's what we're learning. That's There are many who have gone back into sin and when offered the truth for deliverance from sin, they reject it. That's the story of most of Israel and the Bible says that if we're not careful in Romans chapter 11, even we can be cut off if we forget it's by faith that we've been saved, delivered, and that we live. So it's a, it's a precious thing that we have is, is having church meetings. And if it's in the faith, if it's in the truth, if it's using God's word in its righteous context to point to Jesus and what he did at Calvary uh, on a constant, habitual, never-ending uh, basis that we, if we're going to, uh, if, if faith is going to come, the result is always going to be righteousness. The first time faith came to any person who's born again, they were declared righteous by God. And if faith actually comes after that, which it should every day, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, uh, then then it's going to be the righteousness of faith. Always, never forget that. The result of faith is righteousness. It's the righteousness of faith. Uh, the first time we believed again, let me say it again this morning before we dig in, we became righteous to be able to be, we, and we were made servants of righteousness. And Romans chapter 6 tells us that. We were free from sin and became servants of righteousness. Think about that. So now, as long as we keep believing the word of God, in its righteous context, which means our faith is always in Christ and his work at Calvary. Therefore, the Holy Spirit can teach us the truth of God's word. When we believe the truth, faith can come, and the result is righteous fruit. It's always the righteousness of faith, or it's not biblical faith. Get that. Let me say it again. Now, this, this, this is good. The first time you ever believed in Christ and what he did at Calvary, you became obedient in God's eyes because it was his obedience you were believing in unto death. He, he was humble, obedient unto death. You put your faith in that for the forgiveness of your sins, and you were declared by God to be righteous. And if that's where we keep our faith, then the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which cannot be separated from the fruit of righteousness. Because the Holy Spirit's going to reveal truth, and when truth from the heart is believed, because truth is what shows us righteousness, Proverbs 12 and 17 says, He that speaks truth shows forth righteousness. So the result of faith is always righteousness. 
If faith is biblical, if faith is legitimately placed in Christ and what he did at Calvary, the Word of God is going to produce the righteous fruit in your life through the Spirit. Now, that's powerful, and you need to maybe go back and listen to this again. And you can do that free. It's on, it'll be on the YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316, and the website, thecrosswaychurch.com. I encourage you to go back and start with Romans chapter 1, verse 1, and go through verse by verse with us. Uh, today is part 29 of chapter 8 alone. Part 29 of chapter 8 alone, and I encourage you to get your Bibles, your pencil, your paper, and, and, and your heart of prayer. God, speak to me. God, show me the truth of your word. Let it be more than words I read. Let it become the light to my path. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He'll do it for you. He'll do that for you, in you, and through you. So today, we're going to begin and in, 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 in probably back up a, a little bit, scratch our feet before we blast off, like I like to do, in Romans chapter 8, part 29, here on the 20th day of January, 2020, verse 27, Romans 8 and 27, and he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit? Now, that, that, that could be a little confusing unless you dig into this. And what will help you understand this is that the word mind, the mind of the Spirit, is really the purpose. It means the purpose. He that searches the hearts, well, that's the Lord. He's the only one that can search the hearts. And he, he's the one that knows the purpose that he sent his Spirit to you and me. Amen. The Bible says that he's given us his spirit so that we can know the things he freely gives to us. This is how we know it's not the Holy Spirit. When, he, when, when somebody is trying to uh, play uh, the part of the Holy Spirit, and even if they don't know they're doing it, or there, or there some other spirit speaking to us without the help of man telling us that we have to work our way into heaven, or we have to work to be right in the eyes of God, or that we have to work uh, to to be righteous. Don't get me wrong, we never, no one works their way in the kingdom, but once we're born again through the work of Christ at Calvary, then there are many works for us to walk in, Ephesians 2.10, they're all in Christ. You can't work your way into Christ. Christ did the work to get you in him, and now faith in him and his work at Calvary allows the Holy Spirit to do the work in and through you. And never forget that. Never forget that. So he searches the hearts. He that searches the hearts knows what is the purpose of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, we've been given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, the Comforter, the, the one who's been given to us who is God to help us, God with us, Emmanuel, God with us to never leave us and to help us and to make intercession on our behalf for us as the saints according to the will of God. That's the purpose of the Spirit. The mind of the Spirit is to, is to get us in agreement with Him and, and the truth He's trying to reveal to us. And the truth is always attached to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal the truth. Jesus said when the Spirit of truth comes, He's going to reveal truth. He's going to guide you into all truth. And Jesus said He is the truth. And remember, as we've already stated today, write this down, Proverbs 12 and 17, the Bible tells us, He that speaks truth, righteousness is shown. He that speaks truth shows forth righteousness. It takes truth to see righteousness. Now, here comes something very valuable to you. Write this down. Oh, please write this down and go look at it. Proverbs 8 and 8 says, All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. All, every word God has ever spoken is truth, and they're in righteousness. That means the first time you believed what Christ did for you at Calvary, because he's the righteous one doing the righteous work for you. 
humble, obedient he was unto death. And when you trusted in him, immediately God declared you righteous. Because it's the only avenue of grace and righteousness. And when you keep your faith in the work of Christ at Calvary alone, then that flow of grace that he tasted death by, Hebrews 2, 9, continues to flow in your life, and you and I can walk in the will of God as we're taught the truth. See, the Spirit of God was given to us. Paul had to tell the Galatians, had to remind them of this because they were saved, filled with the Spirit, and began to see great things of God, he says, all at the hearing of faith. And he relates that in Galatians chapter 3 to the message of the cross he preached to them, Christ crucified. But then he accuses them of turning away from that and going back under rules, holidays, laws, things you eat, don't eat, and all that stuff, that they were being enticed, going back to works, which stops the flow of grace. If I think I'm going to mature and grow by the things I do instead of simple faith in what Christ has did done for me at Calvary, then I'm, I'm actually denying the flow of grace. Again, there are many works that we walk in, ordained to walk in, but they're all in Christ. And the Bible is very clear in Colossians 2 and 6 that as we have received the Lord Jesus Christ, like so or so, just like you received him, walk ye in him. That means never moving your faith from that which placed you in him. Romans 6 3 says that as many as have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death. I'm not talking about water baptism, I'm talking about death baptism. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's get back to the focus here. We can get off track very easy. Uh, he that searches the hearts knows what is the purpose, the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, all throughout the ages of the church, us included, we've done what we wanted to do and called it what we thought was right, what we thought was God, and we stamped God on it. God won't honor anything that's not his will, and he will reveal his will. He, that's part of why the Holy Spirit was sent. And, and when we don't know what we ought to pray, uh, it tells us that in verse 26, we, we don't always know what we should pray, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And, and he that searched the hearts knows what's, what is the purpose of the Spirit. Believe me, if you don't know really the purpose or, or you don't really know which way to go, you don't know how to pray, there's somebody who's living in you who does? There's somebody living in you who's got the answer. There's somebody living in you who's going to give you the direction if you will learn the truth. Hunger for righteousness. Righteousness. Hunger and thirst for righteousness, which causes you to have to go search for the truth, which is the Word of God in the context of the person and the work of Jesus Christ Think about that. So watch this now. The focus of these scriptures is us finding the will of God. Not what we want to do. The will of God. And the mind is a powerful, powerful thing. There are many people today who are doing what they want to do and have called it the will of God, and they are miserable. Many people today want to do something so bad. They want to marry that person so bad and the Holy Spirit is already convicted and, 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 and with that still small voice and, 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 and is trying to lead them away from certain things, but they want it so bad the mind is powerful and they can stamp God on it and say, God told me this and God told me that. But listen, what we need is the direction in truth. There are many different things that we need to know the will of God about. I understand that. And if we'll just get in the truth, that means never leave the object of your faith being Jesus and what he provided at Calvary so the Holy Spirit can reveal what the will of God is to you for your life. Watch this now, verse 28. No, let, let's finish verse 27. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, if you look back and you see the mind of the Spirit in the first part of this verse, the mind of the Spirit, the purpose of the Spirit, 
is to make intercession for us, the saints, according to the will of God. The intercession that the Holy Spirit is carrying out is to see that the will of God comes into our lives, that we recognize and become a part of the will of God. Everybody good? Everybody with me? It's the will of God the Holy Spirit was sent to carry out. He will not carry out my will. Not one time in if I live to be 500 years old, the Holy Spirit will not carry my will out. He only carries the will of God out in my life. And he does that by revealing truth. You see, truth is God's Word, and the Bible says that God's Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And, it's, and the Bible says he, he leads us in the path of His righteousness. You see, hopefully, we'll be learning what righteousness really is, how it's obtained, how it's walked in, because it's the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of righteousness can never be separated. They're not two different things. When the Holy Spirit is allowed to work because we believed what he's attempting to reveal, which is truth, then the result is that righteous path we find ourselves on. Holy Spirit's not going to drag you along. I don't care what we've said in the past. Oh, when you when you can't walk and you're, you just lay down on him, he'll, he'll just pick you up and carry you. No. He's going to stay right there where you are until he can talk you into getting back up with your faith in the truth. And then, since you're in agreement again, two, you and him can walk together. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So it's about the will of God. So verse 28, and, and twice in verse 27, we see the purpose of the Spirit, the mind of the Spirit, and the will of God. That, that, that's what we should be seeking. And I know Christians have to be very careful when we are seeking the will of God to try to know what the will of God is. There's one thing and one thing only that's more important than knowing the will of God in your life. What in the world could that be? Listen very carefully. It's knowing Him. Knowing Him. The more you learn Him, learn Christ, the grace of Christ, the knowledge of Christ, the more you know Him, the more you're going to find yourself walking in His will for your life. We, we all our lives, we're just over, over, overran with what is the will of God for my life. Just know Him. That's the most important thing of all, knowing Him. In knowing Him, things begin to take place. Just in knowing Him, the Bible says Adam knew his wife, Eve, and she conceived. There's something very powerful in the word knowing. Adam knew his wife again, and she conceived. John 17, 3 says, And this is eternal life, that they know the one true God and his Son, Jesus Christ. Do you see how eternal life is in knowing God and his Son, Jesus Christ? When you know him, that means you have been Born again when you truly know Him. See, the knowledge of God only comes through the born again experience. And the walking with Him and growing in the knowledge of God only takes place as we grow in the knowledge of Christ and the grace of Christ, which He tasted death by, Hebrews 2 9, at Calvary for all men. I hope you're getting something out of this teaching today. I hope you're understanding this, that the, the will of God for your life and you finding it is of utmost importance. That's what the Holy Spirit is trying to reveal to you is the will of God. But the first and foremost will of God above all for the child of God is that we know Him, that we continue to know Him more. If you've been married 20 years, you know your spouse today more than you did 20 years ago. Paul wrote of Jesus that I may know him. Well, when we read that for years, we thought, what in the world? He already knows him. He met him on the road to Damascus. What in the that I may know him? He's already born again, filled with the Spirit and on a mission. What's he talking about? That I may know him. Focus, purpose. Lord, I want to know you. And how we learn of him 
is by following him, hearing him, walking with him, not in the ways I make up, in the way the Bible declares we must walk with him and follow him, that we walk in him the same way we were placed in him, received him, Colossians 2, 6, through faith in what he did at Calvary. And Jesus taught that as well in a different way, that if you're, if listen, he that's going to come after me and truly follow me is going to have to first deny himself not of chocolate bars and Dr. Peppers and pillows on his bed. and No, you, he that comes after me and follows me is going to have to deny himself of whatever it is that's keeping him from taking up his cross daily, which is simply faith in the cross of Christ. There's not your cross and my... I mean, there, uh, your dilemma is not your cross. You better know what your cross is when you step into that dilemma and your dilemma's coming, my friend. Your storm's coming. You may be in one right now. You better begin to understand that there's only one cross. That's the cross Jesus died on for you. His death, I'm talking about, not a wooden beam. And you being crucified with him, buried with him and raised to newness of life in him. Come on now. You better understand that, that if, if, if the result of my denial of self is not an exclusive faith in Christ and his work at Calvary, then my denial is something I've made up to look good among men. Jesus said, if any man is going to come after me and be able to follow me, to be my disciple, that word means learner, that word means learner, disciple means learner. If any man is going to follow me, come after me, be my disciple, he's going to have to deny himself take up his cross daily, then he can follow me. You understand that? Denial of self. If you don't want to eat Snicker bars and popcorn and Cokes and Dr. Fine. If you don't want to sleep with a pillow on your bed, fine. That's fine. If that's what you do or don't want to do. But that's not getting you anywhere with the Lord. The denial of self is biblical when it results in my faith in the cross because that's what I've got to deny myself of, faith in anything else. And my friend, that's a good fight right there, but yet it is a fight, and you need to understand that. It's a good fight of faith. I've got to deny myself when grandma or best friend or co-worker says, yeah, I hear all this stuff about the cross, but you also... No, that but also is a distraction and an attempt to move me away. And I have to, before I deny, it's not about denying all that. It's about denying myself of accepting all that. Because false prophets and false teachers and preachers of ignorance that don't know the truth, who may know it someday, or I, I'm not going to be able to bring them up and point them out as an excuse as to why I didn't follow Christ. Because the main reason is I didn't deny myself. I didn't deny myself of being carried away through the lust of my flesh after something. Nobody ropes us around the neck and drags us into false doctrine. Yes, they're playing their part and the devil will always have somebody around, but it's our flesh that makes the choice to be carried away through its lusts. They can't be blamed even though they will answer for that. Somebody's hearing this today. Somebody's going to get a blessing out of this today. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Them that love God. Now you got to watch this now. Because for centuries the church has just thought, thought we could we could quote this. We could quote this scripture and things just mystically and magically happen. No, Jesus taught in the book of John that those that love me are those who are keeping my commandments. He's not talking about a, a state of perfection here where, oh, the, those people over there, they're just better and high. No, nobody can keep the commandments of God except those who have their faith in Calvary and now the Holy Spirit can bring about the fruit of the Spirit. But 
We can't say we love God while we're hating our neighbor. We can't say we love Jesus while we're living in sin, not obeying the word of God, blatantly, without repentance, making excuses for sin. Jesus sees that for what it is. You need to read John chapter 14. That Those are chapters that we will dismiss and read fast over, and we don't talk much about it but because it's very convicting. Jesus said, those that love me will be found keeping my commands. That means they're going to be led by the Spirit of truth as he reveals truth, walking in truth. Doesn't mean they're not going to ever sin. Doesn't mean they're not going to ever make mistakes. But it means they love the Lord and they're not making excuses for their sin. They love the Lord and they're going to get up and repent and, and follow Christ. They're going to come back to Calvary. Lord, there's where you came against this that is attacking me. I'm not going to overcome this. You already overcame this, and I'm going to trust in what you did to overcome this that's hammering away at me, this that's trying to keep my faith from believing that you paid it all, that you stood against and overcame everything in your death at Calvary. I'm not going to overcome anything. The breakthrough you're looking for, friend, took place too thousand years ago at Calvary and you can experience the breakthrough you need today if you'll experience the breakthrough Jesus provided for you in his death. See, it seems like there's much more that has to be done other than a man dying on the cross, but uh, I'm getting close to being out of time, but I want to share this with you today. Jesus called dead people out of graves by the power of God. Jesus opened blinded eyes and raised up paralyzed people by the power of God. He made the dumb to talk. He fed thousands when there was nothing but a handful of food. He fed thousands. He performed miracles. And yet, had we stood at the foot of Calvary and looked at him that day dying, the Bible says he died through weakness. The Bible says he died, he was crucified through weakness. What's that mean? That means that God's strength is only made perfect in our weakness, and he's the epitome of that picture. You need to hear that. Because had we stood at the foot of Calvary that day and looked at Jesus dying on the cross, we would have thought this. Whatever power he did have, he no longer has. You see, that's being taught in some satanic denominational settings. But let me remind you, the very power that brought the dead out of the grave, that opened the blinded eyes and raised the, the paralytics up from lameness, that, 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 that Jesus fed and, and healed every person that came to him, the same power that he did all those miracles through was the same power being manifest in a man dying on the cross because that's exactly what it was. It was a greater power than all the miracles before. It was the power of God that he was laying his life down by. Jesus said that in John 10 and 18. No man take my life from me for I have the power. <laughs> the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again because I have this commandment of the Father. The cross <laughs> may be like your life right now. You may think you're at the end. You may not have any answers for what it appears to be going on in your life. You're just confused and you don't understand what's happening. The Spirit of God dwells in you. The Spirit of God dwells in you. He's making intercession for you and He's trying to show you the will of God. The cross was the will of God. The cross is the power of God. When it appeared, the end, it was the beginning. When it appeared to be his defeat, as many preach, it was really his victory. I want you to get that today. The will of God is God's will for you. It's obtainable. If you will come back to Calvary, if you will stay at Calvary, and I'm not talking about flying to Jerusalem and go finding Calvary, Golgotha, and going and hanging out on a hill. I'm talking about with your faith in the man Jesus 
and his death he provided for you to be able to have all things freely, to be able to know him, then to be able to know his will. Hallelujah. He is trying to show you that will today. Don't struggle and, and just be heavy laden trying to figure out the will of God because the Bible says we don't know what to pray for but there's somebody that does who's interceding on your behalf. Just be content in knowing him, knowing him, growing in his grace, in his knowledge, and you're going to find the will of God because it's the Holy Spirit's purpose to reveal that to you, and he'll do it. God bless you. We love you. Make sure you uh, share the YouTube channel with your friends, co-workers, relatives, Curtis Hutchinson, 316. Share these teachings. Join us every Monday and Friday live here on the Pastor Curtis Facebook page and Friday mornings at 9 a.m. for our first Timothy teaching uh, live on the Pastor Curtis Facebook page. Pray for us. Donate. Give an offering to the Lord to help us reach farther and farther and farther. You can do that on the website at thecrosswaychurch.com or you can do it on your phone by texting 903 231 5950. God bless you. We love you. And until next time, stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. See you then.